Okay, we're going to do a little bit of collision repair. Oftentimes problems will arise even when a car comes back from the frame shop. Learn more about what's fixing to happen to this car. The 2001 Nissan Sentra. The owner, he actually owns a, a automotive mechanic shop. Him and his boys went and found a hood and uh, two front fenders and bought a radiator support and took it to the frame machine because it was this frame rail was bent. So the uh, uh, frame shop actually welded the uh, radiator support in, saving me the trouble. They said they tacked it in, but when I went and looked, every place is supposed to be welded as well. So saved me the time. They had the uh, they had everything together. They had that bumper on and everything, but this uh, bumper support was actually pulled and ripped right here. Matter of fact, the upper stud that goes into this half is broken, and I could just go buy one. There's going to, no one has one, so it's going to take a few days. So what I'm going to do is just tack weld it. But uh, the problem we have here is this frame rail is just ever slightly. This part's correct on this end. But it kind of goes back at an angle that way, making the uh, holes right here a little bit off. They're too far back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slot them, cut this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a washer. Uh, once everything's bolted in place, take a washer and then just uh, tack it onto the frame. That way it still adds strength and everything's bolted back the way it should be. Just kind of re relocating a few things. So I guess we should get started. metal's going to be dressed up with a wire brush before any kind of welding can be done. I mean, you could, you can get it to weld a little bit without it, but uh, you want to get a good weld stronghold. Okay, I've got it in position. I got a few bolts in place, and all the holes are lined up except for these holes. The other two on the other side lined up. But what's happened here is this: this tube is twisted down, and it's got the holes not lined up. So I'm gonna have to take out more, and then, like I said, weld a washer. That, or I may take a piece of 14 gauge uh, plate and drill some holes in it. I haven't decided yet. I may just use washers; it'd be quicker and easier. So, anyways, that's what I want to do. Next, I'm going to go ahead and tack weld. I'm going to go ahead and put my two welds on it, because that's all it's going to take. It's just two small welds. There's a bolt in this one here that bolted it to it. The studs broke on the top side, so I can't go through here and put a nut on it. 
but I can uh, go ahead and like I said put a spot weld spot weld here and then that'll that'll hold it okay now I have those washers welded on in place uh, I mean I, I did I didn't like do a continuous weld around I just spotted them in and then I ground the surface off a little bit so that they didn't have humps because there's a uh, a bracket that supports the bumper helps mount the bumper that goes against that so um, the lumps would have made it not uh, go up there right and as you can see I put my little spot welds in there since the studs broke in the top so if it ever had to be taken off it could be you know the welds could be cut fairly easy uh, it's pretty much straight out now. We need to just uh, shoot some little paint on those railings for the rust. Now, the fender is hitting wrong right here. It's it's too far over the gap. Of course, I've got to fix this rust. As you can see, it needs to to come back. The gap's too close, and the reason why that is is because up here the radiator support is too low. If you look over here at this side where the bumper, where the hood bumper is, it's it's level. I mean it all comes down to swoop. If you look at this one, it's like this metal here has been twisted and rolled over and I've actually seen this on aftermarket uh, uh, radiator support. So what I'm going to have to do is drill these spot welds out and lift this up until the fender matches right because I noticed when the hood was shut it was way down below this because of this being too low so that'll be the next steps drill the welds out raise that uh, upper part of the radiator support up until the fender lines up okay now I've drilled out those two welds and as you can see it uh, see it's flexible now now I just got to bend this up. I got to take that bolt loose. Probably the other fender bolt loose. Take these, that one and the middle one loose. Then bring this up and get it adjusted when I can clamp it when the fender fits right. And then uh, when that gap's right over there. And then I'll spot weld it back in or weld it back in. So. <coughs> okay, I've spot welded this thing up. Pushed it up. You can see where the original wheel was, how far I had to raise it to uh, get the fender straightened up. And it's common. Uh, aftermarket radio supports are pretty good, but every once in a while you run, especially if you've had frame damage. So it's probably a combination between aftermarket not being exactly on the money, and obviously this all right here is bent crap. So, but it looks pretty good now. So, on with the show. Now, after raising the uh, radiator support, like I showed you and brought it up, now you can see that it's got the fender correctly aligned. The gaps go right all the way down, and the uh, fender meets the rocker panel just correctly and the gaps right there um, like I said it's probably a combination they didn't get the frame exactly fully up they seem to always miss that a little bit and the radiator support being aftermarket was a little off and that's normal and these are just little tweaks and things you can do to uh, line things up and line body parts up just because it comes back from a frame shop doesn't mean it's going to be exactly spot on the money uh, there's some frame shops that are great. I've used some, and I have some that's just mezzo mezzo. But that's how you line body parts up after a, a collision damage. If you like this video, be sure to uh, like and subscribe, and be sure to check back because I'm always working on something interesting.